Hi, I'm Jeff, your Protopie expert. Recently, Protopie user Yasser from Ghost created a mobile experience that went viral on Twitter when he shared it. He made creative use of the phone's tilt sensor to create a color-changing effect and a reflective gleam effect. In describing his design process, he mentioned something very insightful. He says, It is very important to remember that all creative ideas usually emerge from a remix of different concepts. You won't find anything new if you don't try hard enough to mix things up. With his words in mind, I'm not only going to show you how to recreate his effects, I'm also going to show you how to combine them into a single experience. I'm going to start with some artwork in Figma here, and it's important to point out that this text here, Prototyping for Everyone, uh, is not editable text. I've converted this to outlines. This will become important when we do the second part of the, the demonstration here. I'm going to import this into Protopie, but I want to make sure that my frame size matches the scene size. So my frame in Figma here is 390 by 844, which is iPhone 12 or 13 size. In Protopie here, I've got iPhone 11 size. So I'm going to change this to iPhone 12, which is 390 by 844. And now if I go back to Protopie, I should be able to import this. Right click, Plugins. Protopie. And if you don't already have the Protopie plugin installed, if you go to import and say Figma here, it's going to take you to the Protopie plugin screen where you can install it. I already have it installed, but if you don't, this button up here will say install. You only have to do this once. When you export an entire frame, it will export as a scene to Protopie. So I would say export, and here it is, my entire composition in Protopie now. The first thing I want to do is I'm going to set this up so that way when I tilt my phone back and forth like this, it's going to change the color of the prototyping for everyone text and the button shape down here. And I'm going to have it cycle through these five colors here. So when I tilt it away from myself, it's going to be this blue color. And as I tilt it back towards myself, it'll transition through all the way to this yellow color. I need to make sure that these shapes are editable so I can change their color. So the prototyping for everyone. I'm going to make editable, and the button shape, I'm going to do the same thing. Let's add a tilt trigger. You'll find that under sensors over here, tilt, and you need to choose the direction. The X direction is back and forth like this. The Y direction is tilting it to the left and the right. So we're going to use X for this first part. Tilt, X. And what I'd like it to do is change color. So I'm going to use a color response. And we'll start with the prototyping for everyone text. And I'm going to do it through 30 degrees backwards, 30 degrees forwards. So we're going to start with negative 30 degrees. And at negative 30 degrees, I want this blue color. And then at negative 15 degrees, I want it to transition to this purple color. Then I'm going to add another range here. And from negative 15, this will transition from the purple color through to zero, which will be our pink color. I'm going to add another range. This will be from zero through our pink color to this orangey color here. I'll add another range. This will be from 15 degrees to our orangey color through to our yellow color. And then I want to do the same thing for this button shape. So essentially all I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this response with Command D or Control D on Windows and change it to the button shape. All right, let's see if this works. In order to preview this, I need to preview this on my phone. Since we're using the tilt sensor, there's no tilt sensor on our laptop, and therefore we can't see the results until we preview this on our device. So in order to do that, I'm going to expose this QR code, and then on my phone, which I have mirrored over here in QuickTime, I'm going to choose Scan QR Code. This is in the Protopie Player app, by the way, which you can download for free from your app store. We'll scan the QR code. And there we go, now I have it running on my phone. And you're gonna see as I tilt the phone back and forth towards me, I get this color change effect happening. Now where you start the prototype is your zero point for the tilt sensor. So if you start it flat, then that'll give it, so I currently have it flat, you can see in the video here. And if I restart this, now with it flat, you see I have the pink. And if I tilt it upwards or downwards from there, I get the blue. What I'd like is I'd like my neutral point to be in this upright position. So I'm gonna double tap 
player app here. I'm going to choose restart. And now if I tilt it away from myself, it goes blue. And if I tilt it back towards myself, it goes yellow. There we go. That's the first part of this. The second part now will be to add that sheen that goes across. And I'm going to do that by tilting left and right. And that's going to be tilting in the Y direction. So let's add that in. I don't need the QR code up on here anymore because I do have it on my phone already. I'm going to add a trigger. This will be tilt. In this case, will be tilt Y. And let's rename this to be tilt Y. Now, what do I want to have happen here? If we go back to Figma, you're going to say I have this second board over here, which has some utility things in here. I have this shape with a gradient that I've made. And you're going to see if I move it over here, the gradient has transparency. I'm going to use this and I'm going to have it go over top of the, uh, the logo and create a sheen effect on it. But you're going to see that I've made a, uh, there's a shape underneath, logo outline, which is actually a little bit bigger than the logo itself. And if I change the background color of the scene, you'll be able to see it more. So let's just change this to a medium gray here. And you can see I have this logo outline shape that sits underneath the logo. And I'm going to use that as my mask. I need to make sure that this is editable. So I'm going to say make editable. And if I go back to Figma here, I'm now going to import this shape. I'm going to say right click and I'm going to say plugins and protopie. When you choose just an element within a frame, it imports that as an object into your current scene in protopie. So I'm going to export this and now I have this shape in here. Let's turn our background back to black first of all. Okay. What I would like to do is I would like to have this this shape. I want it masked to only the outline shape and I'm going to have this drag across from left to right um, as we tilt left and right here. So let's first, I'm going to take this logo outline shape and I'm going to say use as mask. You can use any vector shape as a mask in Protopie. Always has to be a vector shape and that's why by the way I turned this text into a shape because I want to use this as a mask later to do the same effect on this text here. I'm using the outline shape as it's a vector shape, I'm using that as a mask on the items above. So you're going to see now when I drag this across, we're getting that, we're getting that effect of the gleam that's over top of, over here. Now I don't want this to be perfectly vertical. I'm going to change the orientation of this just a little bit. So first I'm going to change this origin to the center and I'm going to give it an angle of five degrees. And now when I move it across, that gleam is now just a little bit angled and makes the effect just a little bit nicer. So we're going to use, uh, let's see, negative, we'll do negative 80 is fully left and we'll do uh, 450 as fully to the right. Okay, under my tilt here, I'm going to add a move response. The layer I want is this gleam shape. And I'm going to do this just through 15 degrees. So negative 15 to positive 15 degrees, not a huge range of motion here. So negative 15 degrees. I want the X position of my gleam shape to be, would we say, minus 80. And then at positive 15 degrees, I want it to be at 450 pixels. Now let's run this on the device, and we should see this now. You're going to see as I tilt left and right, we're getting that gleam go across the logo. Looks really cool. I want to do the same thing now for the prototyping for everyone text and the button shape. Now we used the logo outline as a mask on the gleam shape. I can't combine shapes to make a bigger mask. I would have had to have pre-composed that. But I can just make duplicates of this gleam shape. So I'm going to copy this. Command D will make a duplicate. And I'm going to drag it over top of the prototyping for everyone layer. And I'm going to say use as mask. And let's do the same thing now. I'm going to duplicate this move layer. Command D. And instead of gleam shape 1, I want this to be gleam shape 2. And you're going to see if I move Gleam Shape 2 across, I'm now getting that effect on the prototyping for everyone text. And I'm going to do the same thing over the button shape. So once again, duplicate Gleam Shape. I'm going to drag it over top of the button shape here. I'm going to turn the button shape because it's also a vector shape. A native shape in Protopie is a vector shape. We can use that as a mask. And let's duplicate our move over here for Gleam Shape 3. There we go. Let's run this. Now you can see I get that gleam over top of all three items here. One over top of the logo, one over top of prototyping for everyone, and one over top of the button. 
Now the effect is a bit too strong on the prototyping for everyone and on the button shape. I like the super gloss that I get on the logo, but I don't like it so much on prototyping for everyone and on the button. Now we can control that. Because we have three separate shapes, we can change the opacity of each of these gleam shapes accordingly. So for the prototyping for everyone gleam, I'm going to change that opacity down. I'm just going to decrease it by a little bit, change it to 85%. And the one going over top of the button, I'm going to turn that way down. I'm going to turn that down to 35%. And this is now going to give me kind of like a satin finish over top of the button. All right, you see now when I tilt this left and right on my phone, I'm getting the gleam going across on the logo, and it's very glossy. I like that. It's a satiny kind of finish on the button shape. I like that. And it's somewhere in between for the prototyping for everyone text. And you can see still when I tilt my phone back and forth towards me, I'm getting the color change in here. So I've combined uh, two tilt triggers here, one for tilting towards me or away from me, and one for left and right to combine two effects into one experience. And you can see, that was a pretty easy thing to do, wasn't it? Now, there are other sensors that you can play with too inside Protopie. You're not just limited to the tilt sensor. Uh, if I add a trigger, there's ones for voice commands, ones for sound, tilt, the device's compass, 3D touch, proximity, um, and then also on the response side of things, I can work with a vibration, I can make my phone speak, uh, I can make a listen for a voice command. So it's a lot of things you can play around with to make the most out of the native sensors. And this is a pretty unique thing that Protopie does, making the native sensors on your mobile devices available for interaction within your prototypes. There you go, easy as pie. This is how you use the tilt sensor on your mobile device in your interaction. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.